Hi, for today's lesson, we'll be learning about phase lines and integral curves often used in differential equations. Phase lines and integral curves are used to show general system behavior to an autonomous differential equation. So autonomous means that our um, first order derivative, y, is equal to some function of y. Now, when evaluating phase lines, we need to know these three points, sinks, also known as stable points, occur at points where the interval directly above is decreasing and the interval directly below the point is increasing. So this is an example of what it would look like on a phase line. Sources, also known as unstable points, occur at points where the interval directly above is increasing and the interval directly below the point is decreasing. So this is what it would look like on a phase line. Nodes, also known as semi-stable points, occur at points where the intervals before and after the point are both increasing or decreasing. So this is what it would look like on a phase line. Instructors may use either term, so it is often helpful to know that both terms are used for these points. For our first example, we have this first order differential equation, dy over dt, is equal to 3y cubed minus 12y squared. We can write this as y prime because it is a first order differential equation. Now, to find the points, we take the derivative and set it equal to zero. In calculus, you may have learned that the derivative is used as just for velocity and also used as slope tangent line. So we want to find rates of change from our differential equation. So after setting equal to zero, we get two terms, 3y squared times y minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, we get two points, y equal to 0 and y equal to 4. However, in order to determine where our uh, differential equations increasing or decreasing, we need to test points along these intervals in between the points. So y equals 5 is directly above y equal to 4. y equal to 1 is in between the interval of 0 and 4 and y equal to negative 1 is below y equal to 0. So for y equal to 5, we plug the value 5 in for our differential equation, and we get a positive 75. Now please note you could use y equals 6, y equals 7, as long as it's along this interval, and it's above y equals 4. We'll find that it is positive right here. For y equal to 1, we get a negative 9, so it is decreasing, and for y equal to negative 1, we get negative 15. So y equal to 4 is a source, and y equal to 0 is a node. Now, source is also unstable, and node is a semi-stable. Now, for integral curves, we draw lines going straight from these points um, to line up with our phase line integral curves. So because it is increasing, it continues up for infinity. Now, it may be tricky to draw the integral curve for in between two points. Since it is decreasing, it falls, so this is its behavior, and below y equal to zero, it is also decreasing, so it goes down. For a second example, we have a differential equation, dy over dt is equal to y squared minus 4y minus 12. Um, after factoring, we get two terms, y minus 6 and y plus 2. We set our derivative equal to zero, and we get two points, y equal to 6 and y equal to negative 2. Now, just like the previous example, we're going to test points along these intervals. So y equals 7 is above y equals 6. y equals 0 is in between these two points. And y equals negative 3 is below y equals negative 2. We find that for y equals negative 3, we get a positive 9. For y equals 0, we get a negative 12. And for y equals 7, we get a positive 9. So for y equals 6, we get a source which is also unstable. But for y equal to negative 2, we get a sink, which is a stable point. Um, this is very similar to this example. However, this point is not a node. It is a sink. So because it's increasing, this point is going to go up. Um, very similar to this example, it's also going to go down. And for the sink, however, it is going to increase rather than decrease. This may be confusing, but um, this is the t-axis running right here. This is the y-axis. So using phase lines and integral curves, we are able to um, better visualize uh, differential equations and um, how they're increasing or decreasing. 
And also for these points, um, some books and instructors choose to write it out like this. So because these are the points, we can write y of zero is equal to that point. So our two points, y equal to zero, y equal to four, we get y of zero equals to four, this line, and y of zero is equal to zero for this line. For this line, we get y of zero is equal to six, and for this line, y of zero is equal to negative two. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope this helped you in understanding phase lines and integral curves.